Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining me. First thing I want to say is just thank you to everyone who reached out and showed their support while I was um, going through some transitions in the last month. Um, I received, absorbed, and used every bit of that loving light and healing energy sent my way, and it was very needed. So thank you very much for considering me, thinking about me, and um, thank you for assisting me in creating this new timeline for myself. I truly am on the other side of a lot of issues that were weighing me down for a very long time. And to say that I was doing all this work with one hand tied behind my back would be an understatement. Um, I was basically hogtied with a pin in my mouth, just scratching out whatever I could. So in this house, we are excited for the new chapter. And even though the last month had a lot of challenges, it was a time of celebration, even during all that recovery, because I knew that a lot of the miracles and blessings that I had been searching for made their way to me and they made their way to me in a very profound way. So I was communicating with the guides and, you know, I was just expressing my gratitude and my higher self came in with the message. Isn't it amazing what healing can take place when you begin to create your purpose? And, you know, that's exactly what the situation is for me. Um, a year ago, before I started this new YouTube chapter that you're seeing now, I was on the ropes. I didn't really see a way out. Um, you know, I had been struggling so harshly for so long and I had, you know, a job that was pretty brutal to endure while I was struggling physically. But I can tell you for sure that I would not be in the situation I am now as an Akashic Records practitioner doing work that I love, um, getting to chat with ancient beings all day. Um, you know, I would not be doing this stuff if it wasn't for that job that I hated, if it wasn't for those health issues that forced me to dig deeper, you know, than I ever thought I could. So I'm on the other side of a lot of heavy energy and I am anticipating a lot of great things going forward. So thank you very much for being along for the ride to this point. Um, I did come today with a message from the Galactic Federation. I was able to tap in um, and ask three questions before the, the energy dissipated. But the Galactic Federation has been coming through for me about once a month. And it's always really exciting because I know that the information is going to be so tailored for the audience that I'm speaking to. So question number one that I asked is what is the biggest block that is making it difficult for our family to connect with their guidance system to um, experience contact with their cosmic brothers and sisters what is standing in the way and preventing a lot of that from manifesting for people and the first thing that came through was very encouraging and basically it was made known to me that there have been some major shifts and there aren't many barriers or blockages preventing people from connecting beyond their own perception of what their situation is. So what do I mean by that? Basically, a lot of our brothers and sisters are meditating, doing everything they can to tune their instruments and get into a place where they can receive um, and experience that connection and that back and forth communication. So they're setting a time, setting aside a time and they are making the effort to, to steal their mind and to reach out, but they're not really feeling like they're getting something in return. So they leave that space feeling like their technology isn't functioning properly. And that is their perception. And you got to remember that these chakra centers, these psychic centers, your multidimensional um, energy sensors, are conscious entities, pieces of the creator in their own right. So they are responding to your perception and your reaction to what your circumstance is. So if you're leaving a meditation feeling like I haven't received what I was looking to receive, 
that must mean that my, my third eye is not on. That must mean that my chakras are not working properly. And um, I just kind of feel stuck where I am. Oh, well, you know, maybe I'll try again some other time. Well, you, you need to be very careful about your mindset when you leave a meditation where you're reaching out. Don't let the, the linear mind get the best of you and tell you that things aren't working and you need to find another way to survive. You gotta find a different approach to take that is more grounded in the matrix. Um, you know, that's what the linear mind and the ego will suggest you do. So you kind of move yourself forward, feeling out of alignment or, or disconnected or clogged up in some regard. But you should know <clears throat> that a lot of the guidance and the wisdom that your, your team has to bring through for you is based on environmental factors circumstantial factors, people that are in your energy, um, different frequencies and different experiences in this place. Um, when we are out and about living our life, certain things that cross our path are going to trigger guidance to come through. But it can't come through if it is your perception that your technology is not working properly. So it's all based on your perception. If you leave your meditations, regardless of if you felt like you received something or not, leave that place knowing that my instruments have been fine-tuned fine -tuned, and I am in a perfect situation to receive when the time is right for me to do so. So if you do not trust your guides to come through for you in the moment that is appropriate, you're going to miss the signs. You're going to miss the communication and the opportunity to see things from a different perspective and to reflect on whatever the current environment is showing you energetically. And basically you will be limited to experiencing the random synchronicities that we have been getting comfortable and familiar with all this time. So you're able to perceive numbers and synchronicities in that regard, but you rarely get detailed and more fulfilling information to, to unpack and study for yourself. So what is your perception of how you're operating? Um, are you closed up? Are you broken? If it is your perception that you're broken, the universe is going to respond in that way. And you're going to miss out on a lot of potential. When you're in that situation, it also makes it very easy for your guides to, to study you and see what still needs to be healed. Um, so we all have a lot of healing to do and that's not the issue, but you should respect yourself and you should consider your worth and your value and what you have to bring to the table because um, your perspective is truly unique and no one else can see and experience things and examine this reality quite in the way that you do. So it's important that you stay on top of your game, especially as we move forward towards the end of 2021 in regards to your perception of yourself, your mission and what you came here to do. Um, a lot of us are stuck in the loop where we just keep fighting, we keep fighting, we're scratching and it's kind of a badge that we wear that we're a fighter and we are willing to endure and suffer if it means collecting the bounty and the rewards that the universe is preventing presenting us with but you won't really ever leave that phase unless you stop fighting and start creating so a year ago that's exactly what i did and you know not to toot my own horn but I'm in a position right now where I'm manifesting so fast that I can hardly keep up with it. And, you know, if you're new, this is a one year period that was followed by 11 years of frustration and a horrible perception of who I was and what I could do. All of my thoughts about myself were distant future potentials. 
I didn't really see myself as I was, and I believed the limitations that the this matrix was projecting to me. So keep that in mind. What is your perception of who you are, how you operate, and why you came here? That's something that you should always be examining. You should always be studying your behavior. You should always be conscious and aware of all of the thoughts that present themselves to you in the now moment. Um, if I can quote my sister, who is actually Aurora Ray, who channels the Galactic Federation, your future is only as good as the quality of your current thought. And um, yeah, I butchered that, but you get the point. So question number two I asked was, what as an old soul, as the creator incarnate on earth, can we project or instruct or say to the universe to get the highest, most powerful, most immediate results? And when I asked that question, it was kind of cool that they like celebrated in a way that I asked it because they knew that they were going to bring something forward that was really life changing for a lot of us. Um, and, you know, they kind of get a kick out of how complicated we make things here. Um, some of the affirmations and some of the, the rituals and the chants that people do are, are way out there. Um, and not really necessary. So in the spirit of keeping it simple, the most potent paradigm shifting thing that you can say to your guides to get results fast is, dear spirit, I give you permission to activate the piece of DNA that I need the most. And so it is. Um, exactly like that. Very clear and very simple and to the point. And in a way, it excites your guides when you throw something out there that's a bit ambiguous because they know exactly what the situation is and they know what to do to serve your intent. Um, so throwing that out there in that way is, is really potent and you shouldn't do it unless you're expecting results, unless you're open to change of any kind, because your guides can see your current now moment and where that timeline is leading you. And they can very easily identify and activate pieces of DNA that are, you know, what they do is way beyond our realm to perceive so they can bring things forward that you know we never would have thought of. We never would have thought to address something in a prayer or a ritual or a meditation. So you're giving pure intent, you're giving them permission to access your field and your vessel, and you are trusting them from a viewpoint that is higher than yours to do what's right for you, to do what's right for your current circumstance and to do what's right for what you're looking to create and they will celebrate that no detail is too small and no energy is too large for them to collect and you know the book they have on you goes way beyond your current expression and implementing that specific instruction is the most potent and powerful agent of change for us at this point. So keep that in mind. And the last thing was really interesting and somewhat unexpected, but I asked what can spirit tell us about the next 10 years? What can they tell us about the next wave of old souls and light workers who are being activated and who are going to be bringing their special essence to the table. So basically, earlier in the 20th century, there was a phase of awakening that went way under the radar. So people started to wake up in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and they were fully on board with the ascension process, and their soul 
strategized in a way that was really interesting. So a lot of old souls, a lot of people who were on mission, um, a lot of elders left their current expression either right before 2012 or right around the time of the shift, right after December 2012. So that created the opportunity for them to be born in a new energy post 2012. So 2013, 2014, 2015, um, a lot of very powerful souls entered into a vessel that had completely new, completely upgraded technology, free of the barriers, filters, judgments, and beliefs that the old energy was installing on people's behalf. In other words, they can't be programmed by the matrix and they can see through the matrix clearly. And I asked at what age will a lot of these souls be activated? And the answer that came back was they already are. Um, they're born that way. They don't have 10 years of facing their shadow. They don't have 10 years of clearing their karma and they get to the point where, you know, they're 40, 50, 60 and just tr starting to figure things out. They're born knowing. And when they get to the age where society takes what they're doing seriously, they don't give a damn about tradition. They don't give a damn about what system is in place and how long it's been there and how effective it has been in the past. Um, you know, they are fully on board and engaged with flipping the script and rewriting the program to one that is in alignment with the creator and not separated from it in a survival situation. So if you've got one of those kids, um, take care of them, make sure that they are heard, make sure that they feel valued in what they bring to the table because the deciding factor in the things that they implement and how fast they do it is the parental figures that they are observing. So teach them about energy, teach them about the unseen, allow them to maintain their playful, loving nature and don't let this place discourage them or drive them into the ground. Otherwise, the ascension process is going to take another generation. Um, so we know that's not gonna happen because the timeline has already been set in place. So things are really going to start to reflect the changes that we've been implementing on a mass scale in the next five to 10 years. And a lot of that has to do with these souls coming online. So a lot of the most powerful souls that are playing this game are children. And I don't know why, but that just rang really true for me, I guess, having a, a one and a half year old, um, that was really interesting to hear. And it just goes to show you how detailed and how planned out everything we do and experiences from the beginning. Um, you know, it's a long term, very long term process and your soul has invested so much in this place. And one of the most profound things that you can do is support the other versions of yourself who are co-creating this experience with you. So <clears throat> that's all I've got today. Um, I hope I brought something to the table for you that you see value in and I will see you in the future.